This is the story of an amazing rescue by the Sheringham lifeboat, J.C. Madge. J.C. Madge was built in 1904, Thames Ironworks in London. She was sailed up here with a crew and landed and worked from here for a number of years. But she was a very, very seaworthy boat. She's quite large, she's 41 foot overall, so there were 16 men rowing. In the early morning of February the 24th, 1916, the snow was falling thick and fast, and a violent storm from the northeast was blasting the Norwegian ship, the SS Ulla, which was carrying a cargo of coal from Sunderland to La Palice in France. The unfortunate ship struck a sandbank and foundered on the Dudgeon Shoal. The Ulla was seriously damaged, but floated off and drifted for about 18 hours until she again struck the bottom this time on the Blakeney Overfalls bank. The damage was so severe that the Ulla signalled for assistance, but having used up all her flares, she was reduced to burning tar barrels. The terrified crew sought safety below decks to wait for assistance, which at that moment looked like it might never come. The Cromer and Wells lifeboats were unable to launch owing to the stormy weather. In Sheringham, the residents were in their homes in front of their fires and wrapped up against the bitter cold when the maroon was fired. The gallant lifeboat crew of the JC Madge raced along the cliff tops down to the old hive. How could they launch in a wild storm and a blizzard? They knew that this was a night that could end in tragedy. Fortunately, they had a hauling off warp a rope tied to an anchor about 300 metres out in the sea. The crew pulled on this, but the first wave swamped them. Every time a wave hit, they had to stop hauling and hang on to the rope for dear life. Then, when the wave passed, they could haul again. They had no fancy waterproof clothing, probably just a homemade oilskin and a sou'wester hat. So before they even launched, they were drenched and freezing. The Madge searched for the Ulla, hampered by the dark and stormy conditions, and they eventually found her about 10 p.m. stranded on the Blakeney Overfalls. There was no sign of the crew, and the boat was listing badly. The second coxswain and another crew member scrambled on board, no easy task in a blizzard. They located the captain, struggling to keep his ship afloat. It was decided that they would ride out the storm overnight and, as the Ulla still had steam, they would attempt to get to Grimsby the following day with the Madge being towed behind to act as the Ulla's rudder. The Madge was tethered to the Ulla and the crew had to stay all night in their boat with no cover. There were many prayers said that night as the blizzard raged around them. The next day, the two vessels made their way to Grimsby. The Ulla could only go at half speed and had all pumps working to clear the water flooding into the bow section. The Madge, meanwhile, was tethered to the back of the Ulla in a very precarious position. They were dangerously close to the propeller, the back paddle to avoid being chopped to bits. The race was now on to get to Grimsby before the defence boom was closed at sunset. With sighs of relief all round, they covered the 53 miles just in time. Upon arriving at Grimsby, the pilot decided to escort the Ulla to the King George Dock in Hull. There was a problem for the Madge crew, however. They were frozen to the thwarts, the wooden planks that form the seating, and had to be lifted out of the boat. Fortunately, most of the Madge crew had friends or relatives in Grimsby where they were assured of warm welcomes and a comfortable bed for the night. A blessing indeed, as there was a risk that they were suffering from hypothermia. Meanwhile, back in Sheringham, no one knew what was happening. There was no sign of the Madge or the Ulla, and they feared the worst. The grieving began. All those husbands, brothers, fathers and sons lost. It was an unimaginable tragedy. Authorities in Grimsby had promised to send a message to Sheringham, but no message was received as all telephone contact was hampered due to the blizzard and the storm. The Madge and its crew needed to get home, 
and were luckily offered a tow from a French steamer. That saved a long row. When they returned four days later, they were greeted by a mixture of shock, disbelief and joy. This amazing rescue is a story that has been handed down through the generations. <laughs>